Kia ora. Hello. Welcome to Creating and Improving Your Impression, a series where we discuss how new or experienced reenactors can improve their impressions. Today, I'm going to discuss briefly how I have built one of my impressions and the processes I went about to research um, that impression and what I can do to improve that impression. Firstly, what is an impression? For me, is how I explored the period of history that I'm interested in by displaying the costume and fashions of the time, the equipment, skills, and maybe even how I interacted with my peers in a social setting. This helps me give an understanding of the people and the society of, uh, that I'm depicting while engaging in living history. Additionally, if I'm in an event, uh, and I'm giving talks to the public or interacting in demonstrations, I have a concise way of explaining who or what I'm displaying instead of just being a medieval guy. Um, when I was in project management, we had an axiom. You can have it fast, cheap, good, but you have to choose two. This also applies to building your impression. We often need to make decisions based on what is most important. On top of this, we also have constraints such as modern safety standard uh, guidelines, material availabilities, lack of knowledge, or reputable sources to draw from. As my previous reenactment group focused on the middle class and urban life of the late 14th century, I decided to build an impression that reflects an often overlooked part of the 14th century, the militia. To make things easier for myself, Instead of going for a pan-European look, I narrowed it down to even further uh, the city of Bruges around about 1390. Much of my impression relies on the fact that Bruges had maintained a standing militia since late 13th century. Many guilds funded their own militias, or at least supplied equipment to arm men. This gave them the right to fly guild heraldry on banners and shields. Bruges also had something quite interesting at the time called Societes Armate, or Arm Guilds, whose sole function was to provide a standing militia to their towns. Having decided to portray someone of one of these guild militias, um, I didn't want to go for the Arm Guilds. They are interesting. In Bruges, they had two. One was the Saint Seb uh, Guild of St. Sebastian. The other one was the Guild of St. George. They being crossbowmen and archers respectively. I'm neither a good archer or a crossbowman. Um, I thought it was reasonable to equip myself with a spear, a dagger and sword and buckler. The impression that I'm currently working on is that of a wealthy merchant who has taken up arms in the militia um, and once again that's in the late uh, 14th century. I'm depicting a man of means, so it would be reasonable to expect I would be supplying my own equipment while others in the militia would have that provided to them by the guild. I'm not someone going to war, instead I'm guarding the town, so I'm not wearing full armour. I'm carrying a 3 meter long spear, I've got that sword and buckler, as well as a dagger. I'm wearing a bassinet, a globose breastplate, a male shirt, all over top of an Akaton. If necessary to go to war, I could armour myself more heavily with arm and leg harness, gauntlets, as well as a visor for the helmet. So what did I do to get it right? Whenever I start to research an impression, I prefer to refer to primary evidence as much as possible. Um, I rely on written accounts and artefacts before art. However, we know that is not always possible. In the case here, I rely on the works of Fossard and the White Hood Revolt, as well as English and Italian accounts of what militia and soldiers wore at the time. I did then have to rely on artistic depictions of militia from the late 14th century, always making sure that I was aware of what was being depicted. As we know, medieval people communicated in allegory and symbology, and this often distorts their art. Overall, I did need to feel confident based on the sources that I had drawn together. I did feel I had an accurate picture of what I um, needed to source uh, before I uh, purchased any materials or uh, made anything. I'm going to put some links down below uh, to some websites that I thought were really handy while researching this impression. I believe 
uh, based on primary sources of the time, it is not unreasonable for someone of the level of wealth of the person that I'm portraying to have a minimum of gambeson, male shirt, gauntlets, bassinet and breastplate. Additionally, art and accounts of the time appear to also support the use of a spear, sword and buckler. So once again, I'm making sure I've got the right level of gear for what the primary sources are uh, providing. What I need to improve. I put this impression together in about three months. Um, this was from scratch, not including undergarments and hose, which I already owned. I'm wanting to improve in it in many ways. Um, I'm not making any excuses. Um, however, I did have to make a lot of concessions when putting it together. This impression was rushed um, and I would not normally be comfortable um, presenting this um, to the public, but I did have to make talks for an event and this was part of that uh, impression. Um, so what do I need to improve? I need to repair the avantail on the helmet, it does not sit right, and I need to fix the padded liner uh, to make that happen. I'm even thinking of changing the style of the helmet altogether, and that might um, also include me buying a new one. Um, I want to change the sword belt, and I need to add better fittings to the sword and dagger scabbard. I'm not sure what type of belt and that's what that's going to look like, but I do have a couple of ideas in mind. I need to sew a new jupon, um, and it appears that this is quite ubiquitous for the militia in all imagery of the period. This may be padded garments functioning as armour, however since I have not researched this, this is just conjecture. I need to uh, get accurate shoes. The one I have in the pictures are not accurate. I'm also going to make a new buckler. Um, the one I have was just a prototype. Ultimately, reenactment is a journey. We are not all the same place in this journey. I believe this is one of critical thought and self-analysis. Work with what you have, um, and what you have may not be the best, but just work with what you have. And just remember, this is supposed to be fun. If you like what you see, um, remember to comment, like, and subscribe.